Hello guys and welcome back to another cool to this one two three video. Today we're gonna to be doing a little game maker tutorial. I'm gonna be showing you how to do um 3D um what do they call it? Parallel perspective. So for example, this is a cube and it can fit into the top and the bottom bits here. Um so so like that. I'll just bring it down to the bottom. So it's quite easy to do this. Um this is this technique is used in games like Pokemon, um, at least the older Game Boy ones, and some of the ones on the um, Nintendo DS. Um, although I don't think the new one, I don't think X and Y, um, use this. Although they might do, I'm not sure. I haven't actually played X and Y yet. I just plan to buy a 3DS and, and don't want to spoil it for me because I'm a, quite a big Pokemon fan. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, it looks 3D. It sort of everything slots in, and um, you could. This is sort of a wall section here um, that I'm hiding behind. So you could use this in a sort of shooter. I don't know, something like that. So yeah, let's um, begin. So go ahead, and I'll start a new. Um, so changes, yeah. I'll start a new game here. So to begin with, what we need to do is we need to create our sprite. So this is going to be our wall sprite. Let's call this wall underscore SPT and we will go ahead and make that. Now we need to double the height. So the height needs to be 64 and the width needs to be 32 if you're doing it that way. Um, then what you, oh sorry, first of all we need to make um, a 32 by 32 square. And we'll just fill that in black and control A, control C it. And then, oops. And then what we'll do is we will double the height then. So that'll be 64 by 64. We will paste in that square and drag it down to the bottom. Let's try and get it aligned. There we go. And we will then go ahead and we'll make another one on top. And let's darken this one. Ah, no, didn't do that right. Darken this one here. And you see that sort of looks a wee bit more like a square. Um, it's up to you how you do this. You can make it all sorts of colours. I think I'm going to make mine um, like a hedge for this example, so let's put our dark colour on that face and we will lighten the colour up a wee bit and put it on the top face, there we go, that's a sort of hedge, sort of hedge, it's not exactly the best is it, hang on I'll make it look a little bit better, let's put some dots on it, and we will then colour pick this colour and we will Lighten that just a bit, and we'll put some dots on this one, so it looks slightly more like a hedge. Um, then what we'll do is we will close that and close that. Now what we need to do is make a mask for this, so we're going to call this wall underscore msk. Stands for mask, and our mask is going to be 32 by 32, and it's just going to be that black square that we copied earlier, which is there. Okay, so that's our mask. Don't center any of those, we'll just leave them uncentered for now. Um, then what we're going to do is create a player. This is going to be player underscore SPD. And we're going to make this slightly smaller than the wall. So let's say, I don't know, we'll go for a height of 48 and a width of 24. Oh wait, hang on, we need to control N, 32, 32. And then what I'll do is I'll fill this in. Uh, I don't know, green, then what we'll do is we'll resize this down so we can actually get a proper, I think I had it right anyway, but we'll just make sure this is working properly, so 24 um, by 48, oh wait that's not what I meant to do, I meant to go transform, resize canvas, sorry, I'm uh, not quite feeling too great today, 40, Eight, and we'll stick that at the bottom. And has that worked? No. Okay. I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna find out the sizes for this, and I'll be right back. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I'm back now, and I've discovered that the dimensions that I want to use are 24 by 48. I did have it right, but I didn't do it um, correctly beforehand. So we're gonna make our player let's say blue, so remember you've got to have the darker colour on the front 
of the block and the lighter colour at the top that just acts as a sort of lighting so if the light was hitting the top of the block um, so the light's coming down from that sort of way um, okay so there's our player actually I don't particularly like that colour of blue I'm going to make um, I don't know, do that just now and then that's going to be our light blue that's going to be a dark blue there we go that looks better okay and then we need to make a mask for that and our mask is going to be our 24 by 24 um, square and that will just be black so that it can easily pick it up there we go and we're going to make this um, player underscore msk and that's for a mask there we go okay so we'll go ahead and we'll make a new object now I'm going to call this wall underscore obj with a sprite of our wall sprite and under here see where it says mask this is going to be set to our wall mask and um, that basically what the mask does is it sets up the collision square so where about the player can collide with the object and um, so that's that's what that does I'll show you I'll show you a little bit about that in the future so if we go ahead and make that solid just now and then we'll move on to our player player underscore SP OBJ and this is going to be our player sprite and our player mask oh, that's our wall mask player mask and what we're going to do here is we're going to basically say um, when it's created we're going to set depth equals negative y and let's just copy that across to our wall depth equals negative y and what we're going to do is every step that this object moves we're going to make it so our depth equals negative y so let's add in some controls for movement here so we're going to say if keyboard check key uh, ord w um, and place underscore free x comma y negative one y negative equals one okay so that's what we're going to be doing control c that control v this is going to be um, our s variable and we're going to do y plus 1 and y plus equals 1 and I'll go ahead and copy that control c control v and we will a and d in there a is going to be x plus no, A is going to be X negative. Uh, one's probably two. I'll do two. I'll just change all of these ones to two. One, two, one, two, two, one. I should even need that. Um, what are we doing? Right. Um, and that's going to be plus two. And this is going to be instead of Y, it's going to be X and X. There we go. And what I'm going to do, just to um, speed things up, make collisions more precise and things, is I'm going to go to settings under my room here, and I'm going to put 60 here. So that has a cap of 60 FPS, so that fastest that everything moves is 60 frames per second. Now we'll go ahead and we'll start putting down our walls. What I would suggest doing is putting your X and Y onto 32 by 32, and then that means that you get um, a sort of nicer collision thing. Also come down here to um, where it says object to add with left mouse and untick this delete underlying box. If you don't, if you still have that ticked what will happen is when you put them over the top it'll delete the previous one. So if you untick that and then you're able to create these little walls and you're able to make a hedge maze or whatever you're doing. So I'm going to go ahead I'm going to make a map and then I will be right back. Okay, so I've gone and made a very, very, very crude maze here, and what you'll see is if we then go ahead and run the game. Da 
da da da. We get collisions with the walls. We can go behind walls. We can go in front of walls. It looks very good. So there we have it. That is um, how to do a very simple sort of um, parallel perspective game in Game Maker. Um, if you want, you can actually make the sprite here smaller. Um, that that's probably going to help you actually, um, because it does look a wee bit too close to the like, the uh, size of the wall, especially when you get that collision there. That's that's just almost too close. But yeah, so so that's that's how you do um, parallel perspective. So thanks for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, um, and goodbye.